So hello everyone, good afternoon, and thank you for being here for this session on presence and flow in relationships. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm Angie and I'm an energy psychology practitioner and I also teach meditation. And this talk today was inspired from my own journey in relationships. So I was always the person who was trying to please everybody, trying to fit into what others wanted me to be in order to be accepted, to be liked. Um, just tagging along. Um, and then I realized the opposite was true. The more I was doing that, the more I was rejected or bullied or made fun of. And I ended up feeling all alone. Then uh, in my 20s, I said, well, maybe I should get married. And I did. And then again, I ended up um, with a person who, rather than a relationship, I was mothering him, catering for his needs. I took his power away. And then in turn, there was a lot of emotional abuse, um, a lot of drama between us. And then until 11 years later, the relationship ended. Um, one of the problems amongst many I found was that um, I was seeing relationships as the end of it all. Like we meet that one person and boom, all our problems are solved. We're settled. We have this guarantee that we'll never be alone again you know, for the rest of our lives. That is where the notion of marriage comes from. And after losing my marriage, that's what I believed when I got married, after losing my marriage, I learned that the opposite is true. And when I was separating, I ended up, you know, like in life, we hold on to all these attachments, these securities, you know, we might find it through a partner, we might find it through a job. All, all of these things through material possessions. And then kind of life has this way of taking that one thing we held on to away from us. And suddenly we're in this abyss of the unknown. And that's what happened to me when I lost my marriage because I really, really thought that once I married, boom, I'm done, I'm secure for life. Um, so I remember going home every night, um, having this fear of the unknown, not knowing what's going to happen, feeling a sense of void of emptiness. And I stumbled across the work of Eckhart Tolle, from whom I've learned so, so, so much. And um, he was talking about this unknown. He was talking about this thing of relationships, you know. And he would say, like, yeah, we watch these romantic comedies and we see, oh, that they get married, you know, lots of stuff happens. And when they get together and they get married, then the titles, the credits come up. And he says, like, what happens after that? You know, nobody says that. And um, so then kind of that's where I realized that, yeah, it's not just about finding the one and that's it that we are meant to constantly grow. We are meant to evolve, whether we are with the one or not. Life still goes on, our journey still goes on. Um, and also I remember when contemplating whether to stay with my husband or not, um, I said to myself, but I don't hate him. But at the same time, I had grown so much that I just could not be with him any longer. And I said, but do I hate him? Kind of because before also, that's what I used to believe that um, you're in a relationship, something goes wrong, boom, that's it, done. And I said, that doesn't make any sense. I said, that, why should I kind of, after 11, 11, this 11 year experience, also we went through this journey of infertility together, boom, suddenly everything ends just like that. Um, and then some realizations came to me. I said, like, okay, so let me see, like, this is my path and this is his path. And do I see him on my path in the future moving forward? We were on the same path for a number of years, yes. But do I see a path with him moving forward? 
And the answer I was asking intuitively, what is the answer? And the answer was no. I could not see us on the comment path. So I said, well, maybe it's just simply that it's time for us to go in different directions. And there, there's no need to be any hatred or resentment. It's just accepting the way things are. And that's another problem I see. I see that, that sometimes, you know, um, we want things to, to stay the same. We want everything to stay the same, whether it's in our job, our, our home, relationships. But if we look at nature, we find that nature is always changing. Nature is always evolving, you know? New plants are, are coming out, other plants die, colors change. And our lives are the same, you know? Um, we are not meant to be static. And it's the same with relationships. We are meant to, to move, we are meant to flow. And we must learn to accept these things, that these things can happen. Um, now, on the other hand, you know, for example, in my case, I realized that the path was to let go and I learned kind of, I wanted to do it in a loving way. And I did, even though, yeah, people were telling me like he was the problem. He took advantage of you, but I know I take responsibility because I allowed that to happen. And I wasn't nice to him either. I took his power away and I was aggressive towards him. So I take full responsibility. So but then how do you do it? And I came across this book as well, How to Be an Adult in Relationships by David Rijo. And uh, he explains so beautifully how to let each other go in a loving way. And that is what we did. So we did go to couples counseling and we uh, were meeting for a while as friends and we were processing our emotions because also it's important to stay present with what emotions are coming up. We were both staying present with our emotions until I felt that it was time, like when my son was born then, and he's not the father, I decided that it was time to stop contact. And I felt that it was done in the right way. Now, on the other hand, if you uh, are with the partner, things change as well. Things do not stay the same. And also we need to accept that too. I can bring an example, since I'm not in a relationship myself, I can bring an example from uh, friends of mine who, for me, I believe they got it right too. So when I knew them, um, I had someone who was not feeling her emotions from her side. From his side, there was a lot of aggressivity and fear of judgment. And um, they were both being present with what's coming up. And uh, they would spend evenings discussing, um, again, feeling their feelings, doing some breath work, doing some meditation. And for a while, I needed to distance myself from them because I didn't really feel that. So as you can see, also in friendships, I tend to sometimes I'm close to people. And when things are kind of not really resonating, I take a bit of distance and then I can jump back in or not. So you see, I, this fluidity I found works much, much, much better than seeing things boom, aesthetic, always seeing the same. So I did distance myself from this couple for a while. And when I met them again, after a few months, they had totally changed. They had totally transformed in the sense that, um, there was no judgment whatsoever. There was no aggressivity. They were, they were more in touch with their emotions. Um, they, they had both grown. They were so full of love and they were in love as if the first time they met. And it, it was such a realization for me what this couple had managed to, to achieve together. Um, and basically that's their secret. They, um, they coach each other. They push each other out of their comfort zone. So they encourage each other to do something that they haven't done before. For example, he's uncomfortable with dancing. She's uncomfortable um, with, uh, uh, with, with talking to people she doesn't know. So they would kind of uh, challenge each other to go beyond their comfort zone. So it was something really amazing. So they help each other to grow. And another thing which, which really amazed me when I asked them, what is your secret? Um, they would tell me like, listen, my, our secret is that if we had to lose the other tomorrow, we would be fine with it. So even though not holding on tightly, even ready to let go of each other, if that's the way it's supposed to go. And that way the relationship is really, really thriving. So 
the point is that um, of this talk is let's learn um, to have more fluidity in our relationships um, as we speak. So when arguments happen, yes, sometimes we need to retract, sometimes we come back together, sometimes we need to take a distance to deal with our own emotions as they come up. And then when we are ready, we discuss with the other, tune into our intuition to see what is the right action to take at a certain point in time. Also, um, removing the labels, you know, um, Again, you can, so in, in my profession, we have this uh, thing of, you have the professional relationship and the personal relationship. And our ethics don't allow us to have personal relationships with people, with clients. Um, on the other hand, um, something I still haven't figured out yet, it's, I do understand yet at the same time, having a dual relationship, maybe it's not okay because there can be confusion to what's professional and what's not. Um, but then by time, can relationships change? Like can, for example, somebody who you have helped become a friend later on, or maybe near an acquaintance? This is a question which is still yet to be, to be answered. Um, maybe in those cases, it has some distance needs to be kept off also because there is a certain boundaries involved. Um, also when uh, we meet people, uh, we also, yes, another thing I wanted to say, for example, when dating, you know, um, when we date, um, I, I still feel a lot of pressure around dating. So what I decided to do to resolve this is to consider people as friends, to consider males as friends. So then I said, okay, um, I'm going to start friends first and then be present with what shows up because again, if you just met someone, I notice also a lot. I tried dating recently, a dating app, and I noticed that some people, like you have a conversation with them once, and then they start to contact you every single day, or they assume that you're dating or in a relationship. Like, it's not really like that, you know? Things have to be taken step by step, and we need to meet each other where we are and be present with whatever comes up, right? So I would say, you start off as friends and then kind of feel the energy, feel what's going on. And if emotions are coming up, again, deal with your own emotions first. So probably if you're nervous before a date, one thing to do would be to resolve your own emotions, your own nervousness with tapping, like we know. Um, and then approach the date from a place of openness and see what's coming up and just act there. So is this friendship? Is this a date? Are we in a relationship? Are we not? Let's, let's let go of those, those labels, you know, and just, just be present. Okay, and um, yeah, and also um, when we are in relationships as well, we tend to make a list of things we don't like. You know, there's the honeymoon phase, which is very nice. And then after a few months, we start um, creating certain expectations of the person. And if our expectations are not met, expectations from our conditionings and for un unmet needs in childhood most of the time. And then if this is not met, we become resentful, la, 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 la. So again, we need to nurture our own needs. Um, and also rather than uh, focusing on what we don't like about our partner, let's focus on what we like instead. What are the good things about your partner? Make a list, write them down. Also write down how you want things to be instead. And if you feel certain blockages, remove those blockages with an energy release technique. And finally, it's very, very important to, for us to stay into our own power in relationships. This is something I really, really used to struggle with. Like when I meet a guy, I would just, or any people, I would just give my power away to them with the hope of being liked because I didn't get much approval in childhood. So I'm, I'm learning. I still have this tendency sometimes, but I'm learning to be aware, to stop myself and to stay present and in my power with the other. And the more we learn to nurture our own needs. So if we're tired, we need to rest. 
um, if we cannot do any more things, it's our decision to stop. Um, we cannot um, get help from someone who cannot give it to us. Uh, we cannot get help unless we ask for it. And if it's not available, maybe something can wait. So yes, we need to be responsible for ourselves and nurture our own needs. And, the, and most of all, to nurture our inner child. I found that also when I tend to feel needy, nurturing the inner child is, is such, such a big thing, you know, because I don't know, the moment I tune into my inner child and ask her what she needs, everything tends to resolve itself immediately and I feel whole. So the more we do that, the more, the less we're dependent on things happening outside of ourselves. And um, then whatever happens is a plus. We don't need, but everything else is nice to have. And we appreciate more and we welcome more what comes. And the more we do this, the more abundance and joy comes to us. Okay, so I think I've said enough from my side. And I'd like to hear from you. What are your views on this? And what are you struggling with? And what would you like to clear today? So who wants to start? Maybe Nicole? Yeah? <laughs> then the one, you know, uh, I wasn't even sure I was going to be able to make it today. And I'm really glad I have now. Um, because uh, it's funny, like there's a lot of things you're mentioning um, that did resonate a lot in the past for me. Um, I'm sort of seeing someone at the moment who it's been really easy to stay in my power, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I haven't lost myself in the person because I've developed a lot in consciousness um, and staying with stillness. And I have a lot of things I'm passionate about. However, uh, imagine we're both, we're, our birthdays are two days apart or we're 22 years apart. Mm -hmm. um, I've known him for eight years. I adore him. He adores me. I love the person he is. And I always, I always just, um, I always thought he was just too old for me. Then recently we met and, um, and we crewed. I didn't got some in a while. <laughs> <laughs> and I just let my guard down. I ended up drinking with him and one thing led to another. Um, uh, <laughs> yesterday, I got really upset because he told me he doesn't like the way I think. Oh. <laughs> I know this is really stupid, but I know it's not about the singing. It was a bit like the love bubble of him seeing me in a, in a beautiful light was shattered a bit. Mm. So I'm feeling my sense of safety threatened. Mm -hmm. Or the, the maybe the good enough bubble, like perhaps I'm adding, I'm adding some stuff to it. Um, Yes, sorry, I just realized like uh, I'm supposed to be talking about what resonates with me with the talk you just gave. Um, yeah, but I mean, it, it can be, and it is both relationships, and this is uh, what's coming up for you, so it's fine. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was, I love how brutally honest he is. I don't love that. Be more specific. Was he specific at least? How do you mean? Because, uh, like, I don't like the way you think. It's a bit too general, right? No, no, not think. Sing. 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 Ah, sing. <laughs> I, I just think. Sorry. <laughs> uh, this, the, he doesn't like the way you sing. Okay. I don't know how. I can't even remember how he said it. Because, like, after it was so traumatic in a sense that I forgot. I, I, I'm, I'm, con I'm feeling myself unconsciously wanting to block it out. Mm. 
I know it's yeah. really stupid. <laughs> so you were singing. So we were somewhere. You were where you were singing. No, I can't remember how the topic of conversation came up. But he passed a comment, and then I was like. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> has, he heard, has he heard you sing? Yes, yes, I'm always singing all the time, man. Okay, to. he doesn't like the way you sing. Okay, I would ask him like, okay, no, first the emotions, though. You need to resolve the emotions, no? Because then once you resolve the emotions, you can ask more questions and you could say like, in what way? To find out more. But you know what the thing is? It's like a part of me is saying, oh, yes, I need to brush up because I don't actually, you know, all right, I don't sound like freaking Celine Dion. <laughs> use his freaking words but, um, <laughs> but I don't think I have a terrible voice and he's uh, and he was really brutal it was, it was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> like and then he said something like maybe you need to touch up but then kind of then part of it's going like no 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 and you know what I'm like the more I say this to you and get in touch with it it's like I want to be adored in your eyes. I don't want you to tell me anything is wrong with me. I want you to be, you know, um, engulfed by me. Oh, what, okay, let's let's do this. What do you think about your singing? That's the thing. That's why I said I, I like it. I'm okay with it. I know it's not perfect. Are you sure, but I enjoy it. Are you sure it, about it? It's not perfect. It's not perfect. Okay. But it's does it it's have not to be? about does it have to be perfect? I do actually want it to be better. I do wish it was better, but I know I'm not terrible in the sense of okay. cats don't go running. Okay, so this is about you, right? So something was triggered in you. Yes, exactly. That's, uh, that's why as I'm talking to you, you, if, you if you're damn sure about how good you sing, you wouldn't be affected by such a comment. You put yeah. it on him F off. <laughs> if you don't like it, just leave the room, you know? <laughs> yes, in fact, but so, see, like you're, you're, what you're saying now, I, I know this really well. It's been really apparent to me. And I'm going, because I'm saying, like, I don't mind how I sing. Normally, he doesn't offend me like this. Why is this getting to me? And I'm like, I'm pretty sure it's not about the singing. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the it's the criticism how I reacted to. Mm -hmm. criticism yes, 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 yes. It triggered something in you. Mm. How are you seeing this person, though? Um, uh, some examples: um, a partner, a friend, a role model, a mentor. How do you see? Also, since he's older, how do you see him? That's the thing. I see him as a part. It's really funny, and because we both say, like, I remind him of his mom. Mm. And he reminds me of my dad. Mm. Mm. But there's a real lot of ourselves in the mix. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense, it's like I, I, he, there are the, the, I think there are the good things about our parents that we liked mm -hmm. in, in ourselves when we, when we meet, you know, the dynamic is, it's very interesting what parts of ourselves and our parents are coming up because it's not I guess you know when he said it I just felt completely unloved mm -hmm. I felt I wasn't good enough and I, I got scared that I'm going to die I'm going to lose him mm -hmm. It's really weird. He really threatened my uh, the not good enough bubble, you know. Mm -hmm. I think that's what happened. Like, cause I know it's not the singing. Mm -hmm. It's something. So, what did you feel in your body when um, he told you this? Right now, I still feel it. It's like well, it's really you. heartbreak. 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 So expectations violated, so to speak, maybe. May I ask a question? Sure, sure. What does your father think about your singing? 
my father loves it. That's the thing. My father really loves my singing. He says that I sound like my grandmother. Mm, interesting. So, but now I'm thinking, what if, what if my father is actually deaf, which I know he is, and Matthew yeah. isn't? <laughs> so my father probably thinks I have this really sweet singing, and it's not the case. Aha, 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 aha. This is interesting, eh? This is interesting. Um. Okay, you know, very, very good, very good observation there. Yeah, definitely. Um, uh, so it could be, yeah, there is a father figure involved, and then kind of this was something which is not like your dad would react. So kind of it broke your your, your perception. That's what I'm. That's what I'm because you know what it is actually the this I have to mention because this is really important. Matthew and I know that we are meeting as ourselves and not to clear karma with our parents. This is now, you know how first it all becomes about clearing the karma with the parents about, yeah, yeah, um, yes, yes, yes. you know, because they, they would have said, they would have made you feel things about not being good enough. But now it's like, it's my introject. Mm -hmm. It's no longer the voice of my father. There is no, uh, how do you say, You're, I'm at the, the fulcrum of the, of the onion. You know, mm -hmm. I've come to the middle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really now it's sort of like I can't rely on on my father. I have to look within for exactly. this answer. That's what it it looks like. Yes, 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 yes. Probably uh, you are depending on validation from your dad, and now it's it time for you to validate yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, but we can we can today work with the emotion, with the heartbreak, so we clear that. And we see what comes up, because also with the FT, you know, then after we clear, then some things will surface. So we'll see what comes up. Um, and, uh, okay, so one last question. What does this heartbreak remind you of? I actually don't know. I'm thinking it must be, you know, it's the, the only thing that comes to mind is when I was five years old. Mm -hmm. um, when, when I would, because I think there were times I used to go up to my dad to show him things I was proud of and to speak with him. Mm -hmm. And and then he would get angry because it's, he's like, I don't have time for you. Mm -hmm. But then I don't know how it relates to this. Matthew was just a bit like, I don't like it. It's a, uh, it's, it's similar because it's like a high rejection. Oh, it's a form of rejection. Okay, let's go with that. Okay, and also let's give some time to Daria now to to share. Because I know Daria has a uh, trip coming up. Yeah, you want to add something else? Just I want to say, okay. and I have to leave at five. Okay, okay. Um, what we can, or else what we do, listen, listen, tell you what. Um, we do only tapping today, and we stop at five. Those who are a small group, is everybody okay with that? Yeah? Yes, 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 yes. It's no problem. No problem. Let's do that. We have enough to work yeah. with. So, um, and I'm sure that we can do it together, and we'll, we'll all... Have stuff which resonates so don't worry okay so let's daria share a bit we do the tapping and we stop okay uh i'm a relationship wise on the complete other end of the spectrum i'm with my husband since forever since we were 17 years old <laughs> wow. literally my high school sweetheart but uh, yeah, we've had struggles, like you mentioned in your speech that about your friends that were aggressive towards each other at some point. Yeah, we had many such waves in the relationship, but we figured it out that it's just growing up. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
we just have to readjust because we're no it, it happened many times but we're no longer the kids we used to date when we were 17 we grown up we're different persons and we have to readjust and restart the relationship from here yes 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 that's it that's it and it's something that's constantly happening. We decided to marry each other, not because we were so in love or super attracted to each other, quite the opposite, to be honest. It was because no matter what happened between us, no matter the teenage drama, no matter the breakups and heartaches that we had at 7, 18, uh, we were best friends. Even in the worst breakups, we would still chat together, sit on a rooftop alone and mm -hmm. chat. We would break up as a relationship, each have their own partners, but we would still be best friends. Oh, wow. Oh. Oh, nice. so, uh, so we said, that's why we get married, because no matter how the relationship oscillates, pendulums, we still have the best friend to watch a movie with. We still have the best friend to have a chat with. We still have the person we like to hang around with. Mm -hmm. And that has been true to, through our relationship, regardless of what storms or what things life brought. And regardless how far apart we were from each other, relationship-wise, attraction-wise, or... Mm -hmm you know, physical attraction wise, we were at times super far apart. We were still best friends. And then the yeah. bad part and everything comes back because it pendulums. So for a moment you would be friends and not feeling anything. And the next moment you would be yes. super attracted to each other. That's interesting, that's interesting. But we would never impose on the other. If one of us needs space, yeah, we, he goes in another room, sleeps in another room. It, it's, it's a natural way to have the relationship without forcing anything. We don't have the stereotypical matrimonial bed. Everybody, anyone sleeps whenever he wants. Maybe uh, the little one wants to sleep with me. Maybe mm. the kids want to sleep with us. It's, it's mm. not a important thing, the sexual and physical part for us. Mm -hmm. That happens because it happens. It's hormones at the end of the day. Yes, yes. How interesting. I think you guys got it right, huh? really, because like you're not forcing, you're just allowing things to happen naturally. Yes. Right? It's working. Uh, it's clear that it's working. It is. And it's not, um, it, it doesn't take effort. Oh, okay, we might have fights, obviously, like everybody does. But as I said, whenever we have a big fight or something, we realize that it's okay, it's a growing moment. We might need some time apart. So each does its own work, its own thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we get back together and we're picking up the relationship as different people because, yeah, we changed many times. But uh, yeah, as thank you for sharing. I think you got it right. I mean, is there anything I can help you with then? Because <laughs> like, I think you got it right, really. But relationship wise, we are struggling most in moments like this, but you already know this because we had a oh, session. Yes, yes, yes. In moments when we have to touch back, <laughs> funnily enough, with 17, 18 year old us going back home, yeah, to the in-laws. Mm -hmm. Going back home to the in-laws, going back to the home city, going back to those patterns. Mm. Okay, so just give me one thing you'd like to clear today. And so let's get to the so talking. So here is whew, the uncertainty. That's mm -hmm. how I would define it, uncertainty. vulnerable uncertainty like mm -hmm. me right now in malta don't feel as anything can harm our relationship but me at 18 vulnerable was very scared that somebody might harm our relationship 
Okay, so going back to that time and, and clearing that 18 year old, okay. Okay. Okay, nice, nice. I don't know if you want to hear a bit from me. Um, I can make it very short because, oh, somebody came, Joe. Right on time for the tapping, but like Nicole needs to leave, so like. Hi, Joe. <laughs> Hi, Joe. Hello. Anyway, um, let, let's go to the tapping since Nicole has to leave. Joe, um, if you're there, um, we did the talk. You can watch the recording and uh, we did a bit of sharing. And now we're going to do some tapping to release. And just tap with us. And if anything resonates with, I mean, for sure something will resonate with you. So just tap with us and focus on what you are feeling right now, what's blocking you in your relationships. And um, yeah, and let's do this together. Okay. So yes, Joe, I don't know if he's done tapping, but just um, just do what I do and, and um, say what I say and you'll be fine. Okay, so let's get started. So, you know, you know, Nicole and Daria, they know tapping very well. Uh, and anyway, Joe left, so um, yeah. Oh yeah, I wanted to share my thing. Um, is that okay? Just, just, just a minute. It's like my, my situation, like I haven't been dating in uh, three, three years, which is a heck of a long time. Um, uh, cause you know, since my son was born, it got complicated. I had to resolve feelings towards the father. I had separated not long before that. Um, right now, kind of, I felt some feelings with a guy who was my boss for five years. And the thing is, I always liked him always, but you know, being the boss, it wasn't maybe a good idea because again, there's this dual relationship. In fact, then he went on and found a girlfriend. I went on and had a baby and nothing really happened. Now um, his contract was not renewed. They, um, he, got, um, he, got, he got fired and he found a job in the Arctic Circle. But whenever he comes to Malta, he comes to Malta from time to time and he asks to meet. And at first I was like, maybe he wants to meet as friends or to find out what's happening um, at, at university. But then kind of the last time he asked to meet, I was uh, starting to feel feelings for him again. So it's a bit like Daria said, there were times where like, I just didn't give a crap, you know, we were just distant and nothing. And now kind of I'm feeling attracted to him again. And um, yeah, we had a nice conversation. He was really good with my son because my son was with us. And then uh, he told me um, that we'll meet in summer. He'll come back in summer. And uh, he invited me to visit him over there. So, so I'm not really sure what's going on here. Um, but um, I said, okay, I'm going to be present. He's not here right now. I'm going to be present with what come up, being present moment, being with myself, and then being open to whatever may come up. So for me, it's about letting go and being present and allowing whatever happens to happen. Okay, so let's start the tapping. <laughs> so even though... Uh, if you, well, you can, you can unmute and repeat with me. I prefer that way. Yeah? You can, I prefer that you repeat. Yes, 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 yes. It's better. Okay. Even though. Better, but... Even though. Oh, I have certain uncertainties. I have certain uncertainties. One moment, everything is fine. One moment, everything is fine. Next moment, I feel so insecure. Next moment, and I deeply and completely and I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Love and accept myself. Two more times, even though I'm so insecure. I'm so insecure. I'm vulnerable. I'm vulnerable. Like when I was 18. Like when I was 18. Or feeling not good enough. Needing validation. Needing validation. Like when I was five. Like when I was five. I deeply and completely. I deeply and completely. 
love and accept myself. You have one more time to do, right? One more time. Did you do two or three? Okay, even though, one more time. Even though. I'm feeling this heartbreak. Deep in my chest. Deep in my chest. I feel this vulnerability. I feel this vulnerability. I need validation. I need to hold on to someone because I feel not good enough and uncertain. I wish there was someone I could rest onto and who would solve all my problems. I deeply and completely love and accept myself. Now go on the eyebrow. I feel this heartbreak. This heartbreak in my chest. I rely on dad for his validation. I want my daddy to be proud of me. And when I was five years old, he rejected me. He told me, I don't have time for you. And I feel so heartbroken. One moment, I'm fine. Then next moment, something has to happen. <sighs> now we're having this trip to Romania. And I feel so vulnerable and uncertain. Just like when I was 18. I'm afraid of my in-laws. I don't want them to intervene in our relationship. I don't want them to intervene in our relationship. We are good together. We are good together. And I don't want anyone to change that. But now we're going to visit them. And I feel the same as when I was 18. Vulnerable and uncertain. And this heartbreak. I wanted so much Matthew to approve of me. Just like I wanted it from my dad. But he doesn't like the way I sing. I thought I was a good singer. Maybe I can improve a bit. But it's not so bad. Why did he say that? He didn't have to say that. It broke my heart. Now, I don't know if I want to sing in front of him again. I have this trip tomorrow. Why won't they leave us alone? What if something damages our relationship? I have all these fears. <sighs> that our relationship will be harmed. <laughs> Things are good the way they are. We have come so far. We have overcome so much. 
But this trip can ruin everything. But why are these are all external things? Why am I focusing on external things? I allow myself to tune into my feelings fully. Tune into the heartbreak. The pain in my chest. The pain in my chest. And we start to release now. Feeling my feelings fully. And I slowly and gently release. These triggers are not real. They're taking me into the past. They're not allowing me to be present. But they have come up. And I choose to accept that. And give them the attention they need. Heal them. Heal my younger self now. Visualize that younger you, the five-year-old, the 18-year-old, and close your eyes. Imagine these situations where you feel vulnerable and insecure and where your father did not validate you. And so visualize these situations with your younger self and... Now, as your adult empowered self, I invite you to go in that scene and ask your younger self what she needs in this moment. And just go over and give her what she needs. Whether it's a hug, whether it's reassurance that everything is okay, whether it's strength and inner power, maybe give her a little glimpse in the future on how far you have come today and what you are achieving today. And watch that little younger person's expression as you give all this to her. <sighs> Remember that you can do this anytime you feel this way. Okay, so we start tapping, just take a big, 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 nice deep breath all the way to the belly. <sighs> have a sip of water if you have. Shake it off, shake it off. Shake it off and feel whole, feel complete, feel empowered. So empowered that nothing and no one outside of you can change your inner state. Step into that right here and right now. Ah. 
feeling present and grounded in the here and now. I'm mindful of the time, so if, if uh, you'd like to share or I just leave you to it, it's up to you. It's really interesting and um, the heartbreak doesn't feel like it's there anymore yet. Uh, right now I feel I have a bit of a numb sensation where I was shaking and it got my shoulders. Uh, I really love releasing, like, obviously, wherever that heartbreak was, like, now it's, it's transformed, it's transmuted. Mm -hmm. It feels a bit like, I don't know, it's got, my conscious mind is a bit like, what was I worried about? Um, uh, it's like, I don't know, I, I think I need to give myself some more time to see how I feel, but honestly, I feel good and I'm happy with it. This I feel freer in a sense, actually, like mm -hmm. like something lifted off my head, you know, this weight off of my head, like, you know, it, some, it wasn't even, it's like the words like that about me don't even make sense because it was so much deeper than, than that. It's, I don't even know how to explain it. It's pretty verbal. Mm -hmm. um, let go of, uh, I think I was lost in the emotion, lost in the, in the concept of feeling not good enough. Yes, 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 yes. I mean, another way to handle it, it was for sure the emotion, definitely, which is, is lighter now. Yeah, yeah, and it, it is definitely much lighter. I, mm. I feel a bit energized now, as opposed to before. Yeah. So, like, what, um, what came up for you? So, like, if this Matthew guy tells you again, I don't like the way you sing. You can't sing at all, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, have fun with it, right? Sometimes, you know, we take ourselves so seriously, you know, like sometimes you're having a good laugh about it was also. I wish I like it. Like, like, I said, thank you so much. Like, I'm so grateful that you were, <laughs> I, I brought this forward. Like, it was up until an hour ago or 20 minutes ago, it was still killing me, you know, and but the yawns I could feel were really coming deep from where that heartbreak was. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, oh my God, wow, it just hit me. Uh, the illusion that I could be shattered, that I couldn't, that I could ever be imperfect. Uh-huh, um, okay, okay, okay. It was like I, I got, I moved away into the brokenness, into the fear of, being let go as opposed to I it's I feel like I brought back I brought it back home. The the feeling that I'm not sure if I I'm... feel like the, the emotion has been absorbed back. Okay. Into, into consciousness. I don't know if you ever discussed this with Leon and Lindo like about no no share sure, do share do share. Uh -huh. It's like the the fragmented part of the self uh-huh okay okay yes yeah. oh wow oh. as if a big part of me had had left me and <laughs> now i know i can't be broken mm. oh thank you oh. <laughs> thank you so much Oh, my dear. 
And this is why we do what we do, right? <laughs> For this, it was worth it, really, doing this session. We lost Daria, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, Daria, no, she's still here or not? Oh, yeah, yeah, she's still here, still, because I didn't see her. Yeah, for this, okay. it was worth it, you know, so everything happens for a reason, definitely. Oh, guys, I really want to say thank you so much. Daria, just going to let you know, every time we came to your pieces, I was really rooting for you as well. <laughs> providing you my um, my support and also channeling myself maybe 18 year old me had <laughs> yes it's all like when people talk together it's all you know the effect is amplified yeah no I'm very happy that I'm, I'm doing this and in fact last Saturday like I got Mindo believes in this technique so much that he invited me as a guest lecturer for the TTC so on Saturday, I gave a lecture on EFT to the TTCT student, and it was amazing, really, really, really. I, I believe it's a very, very important tool for us um, to remove the blocks to consciousness. Yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was really good. Yes, yes, yes. Because we go into the specifics, you know, with EFT. That's what I like about it, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, so amazing! Thank you. So amazing! Thank you so much. I really You're appreciate welcome. it. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. Okay. I have to go because my class has yeah. started. Yes, yes, mom. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, Daria, I can carry so on much. to to share, and we can stop here, obviously. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. It helped a lot, but um, how was it for you, Daya? You, 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 you can go down and call them because uh, I know. Uh -huh. It helped a lot, but it already. I was already so not as triggered because our last session on yeah. Friday. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm already much more at ease. Yesterday it happened something. It never, I never did it. <laughs> I honestly stayed chatting with my mother-in-law on Messenger on Facebook, like live in a call, over two hours. Wow, two my, hours! My my husband was not at home. We were just chatting me and her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This has not happened since. Well, I, we told her we we're getting married. I told you it was happening before. We used to yes, yes. have peace and spend time together and do her hair. And we were actually talking about hair. <laughs> <laughs> but it happened something that it hasn't happened in 11 years. Wow. Wow. Love this, really. Love this. Wow, amazing. Amazing. So... Now you'll go, you know, on your trip, feeling much, much lighter. lighter and, feeling like and, and I'm and going there to have a chat, to have a good time. And if something comes up, deal with it then and there. Not it is, yeah. Take some time for yourself and you deal with it. You know how. So, yeah. Wow, that's so amazing. No, I'm happy you see. So we were saying like this trip. Um, even Amanda said it's like it could be um, uh, something which came up for you to heal and it happened so um, yes yes yeah yeah really happy really happy for you thank you <laughs> yes 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 okay so uh, yeah um, we stop here um, yes. and yeah have a good trip same and thank you have a good end of the week so I enjoy the wedding yeah um, do you have a dress it's a it's already there <laughs> I shipped it yes. in advance yeah so like dress up make yourself nice you know um eat drink dance yeah enjoy <laughs> it yeah enjoy it thank you have a good weekend end of the week thank you thank you thank you thank you I feel for me it's time to slow down a bit because I've been doing a lot you know overdoing so I feel it's time to like um slow down a bit now so yeah give yourself a time out <laughs> yes we need a time out wednesday <laughs> i want
wanted to ask you, Daria, um, about the recording, because like some people asked me for it. If you want, um, if you're not comfortable sharing um, with other people, I can cut out the part where you and Nicole. I'm, your family, I'm fine. Your I family, yeah, because since you shared some personal things. Um, OK, um, so I'll just uh, post it, uh, post the recording so that other people because also maybe some people were at work, they couldn't make it, so they can watch yes, it. Yes, yeah. it's an hour where most people are still at work. Exactly, but this is the only time. Maybe Alexa, they can do it at five, but I cannot do it later because of my son. So um, that's it, yeah. Anyway, we'll see. Okay, yeah. there you are. Lovely to catch up. And I'll see, see you soon. See you, see you, bye. Bye, 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 bye.